Hi and welcome back to a new video. The Leon D Unifans LCD are finally out. You might have seen them already during Computex. We have a few samples that we received from Leon D and today we want to check out both performance and how well the software behaves when it comes to configure the LCD that is built into the fan. I ordered some classic competitors on the fan market and we want to try them today. Hetzner is a reliable hosting partner with a passion for IT. They run their own high-tech data center parks in Helsinki, Finland and in German cities such as Nuremberg and Falkenstein, which we also visited as well. And there are videos about this on my channel. They also provide their customers worldwide with simple solutions for complex issues. By merging its capabilities in cutting-edge technology, attractive pricing and competent and skilled customer service, Hetzner also increased its market share both inside and outside of Europe. As one of the leading hosts providers, they offer self-developed high-tech products such as dedicated managed and cloud servers. Aside from these products, you can also get high-quality storage products which are available everywhere at any time and of course a variety of other services for an unbeatable price. Now click at the link in the description and check out Hetzner. The test setup is very similar to the last time, but it's a different radiator because we are now testing 140 mm fans. I mounted them on the EK surface radiator, which has a fin density of 20 fins per inch. That is a really high fin density. That means it's a high resistance for the fans, but also theoretically high cooling performance with those radiators. We are checking the performance again with the delta of the water to air temperature. You can see the delta in front. Currently it's about 70 degrees Celsius and the water temperature is 34 degrees Celsius measured directly from the reservoir of the pump. The pump is running at a fixed RPM of 2000 and we are testing this with a 3900 KS that is limited to 200 Watt because much more would not be possible with a single 140 millimeter radiator. We are testing with a fan speed of 1000 RPM and I will always set it in BIOS as close as possible to this value. And to make sure that we're always delivering the same amount of power from the CPU to the radiator, we set both long and short duration power limit to 200 Watt. We are testing with 1000 RPM simply because I think that is probably the highest you usually run on a daily setup with a 140 millimeter fan above that. They also don't all support the same RPM region, but with 1000 RPM I can compare all of them. We will start with the noise blocker NBE loop in the 140 millimeter RGB version. It is generally speaking one of the older fans, I think. The blade design is already like 8, 9 or 10 years old. So that will be quite interesting to see how this can perform versus nowadays fans. This is how the fan would look like if it's not spinning. And also for today's test we will only test RGB fans. I'm now running R23 loop for 20 minutes and always check the CPU package power which you can see is always running at 200 watt, constantly pumping this amount of heat into the loop. I'm always also double checking pump speed, it's always fixed at 2500 RPM and also cooling temperature as a second value here read out from the pump, while if we check it's about one degree Celsius difference measured directly from the reservoir which is absolutely plausible. And at the end of our test we have a delta of 17.7 Kelvin. Continuing with Arctix P14 PWM PST ARGB fan. Looks like this while it's still not connected and like that while it's running. And in the end we have a delta of 21.1 Kelvin with the Arctic fan. Continuing with the Fantex D30. That's how the fan itself looks like. And as you might know, this is also a daisy chainable fan. So you can connect multiple directly with each other without using cables. By the way, I just replaced the second sensor where I'm taking the room temperature from. I was not quite sure if it's still accurate. The condition was not too nice. That's why I also repeated the noise blocker measurement again. And it turned out to be 0.2 Kelvin better than what we initially measured. That was due to the room temperature being 0.2 Kelvin higher. I don't think that's a huge difference, but yeah, just for you to know. And that's how the Fantex D30 looks like when it's running. I think it's a beautiful fan. It looks extremely high quality. I also like the RGB, also with a bit of RGB on the side. And with the Fantex D30, we have a delta of 20.1. 
Continuing with Corsair's QX140 RGB. I think you saw this fan already multiple times on my channel, but I think so far only in the 120mm version. The Corsair fan, as you know with IQ Link, makes connection also configuration a bit easier because I can easily just set the fan speed over Windows. At the end of our test we have a delta of 22.2 with the QX140. Fantex D30, Arctic P14 and Corsair's QX140 have about the same noise level of 36.4 to 37.3 decibel at 1000 rpm. So that's basically measurement tolerance with the equipment I have here. And in this condition the Corsair QX140 is the worst with 22.2 Kelvin difference between the ambient temperature and the water temperature. The Fantex D30 beats this by 2 Kelvin. Now if you pay attention to the chart, the noise blocker NBE Loop X is a lot stronger when it comes to the delta temperature between ambient and water temperature. We only see 17.5 degrees Celsius, but it also is a lot louder with 44 decibel. The explanation for this is pretty simple. If you look at the rotor size of those fans, for example the noise blocker NBE Loop and the Fantex D30. The Fantex D30 has a diameter of about 125 mm. This one has about 135 mm in diameter. So we are talking about one centimeter difference between those fans when it comes to the diameter of just the rotor itself. That also means that at the same fan speed this fan will be able to push a lot more air as this one. But at the same time the speed at the end of the blade right here, not sure what the English term for this is, like rotation, rotational speed, something like that, but the speed at the outside of the rotor will be higher than on this fan. That's where the noise difference comes from. So I thought, okay, let's check this in a different way. So I lowered the RPM on this one to match the other fans. At a speed of 770 RPM, the E-loop has a noise level of 36.8 decibel, measured at a distance of 20 centimeters, same as all the other fans. And with this setting, the temperature was at 20.2 Kelvin, so pretty much identical to the Fendex D30. And with this, we are now continuing with the Lian Li Unifan LCD. And here we have the fan. On the side we have the Lian Li typical infinity mirror stuff with RGB on both sides. And on here, if you rotate this, you will see that the center stays still. Because there is the LCD built-in, which is a really cool feature. It is using Lian Li's typical daisy chaining system, so you can hook up multiple fans next to each other, but you also need this additional Lian Li controller. Another tiny but I think very cool feature are the screw covers. So right now they are not installed yet and you can see the screws. And this is how it looks like with the screw covers in place, just tiny rubber pads that you push in on top. But I think it makes the fan look even more elegant without the visible screw heads. Already the first impression, yeah. I still have to install everything like the Lian Li software and all that, but first impression is awesome. Really nice looking fan with the display in the center. I just wanted to download the Alconnect 3 software and then I had to find out that Lian Li is actually hosting this on a normal Google Drive and due to the high amount of downloads, the download is disabled. That's not really professional. I want to talk about the software now. So the first thing is whenever I open this it always tells me that there is a new firmware version available. But if I go to settings and update and check it tells me that I have the latest version which doesn't make a lot of sense. I cannot update anything as you can see but it still tells me that there is a newer version available. The fan setting itself with the fan curves I think is quite good. You can set all kind of different fan curves. You can also connect it to the mainboard directly if you want to. So if you're using the mainboard fan control you can click this on top. I don't have this connected right now so I'm not using it because I want to use custom and the fixed fan speed of 1000 rpm. You can see I set this right here. There is also start stop available. Wouldn't make sense with a fixed fan speed but if you use some kind of fan curve you can also use this start stop function which is basically zero rpm. There's something wrong because as you can see the fan keeps getting connected and disconnected for whatever reason. Completely disappeared now. I can set the lightning effects so if I change this it also changes on the fan. That works but now this is gone. Cannot click anything. Huh. 
the restart and then, as you can see at least the LCD is back working. It's working now and from the list you can select for example playing a video on there, sensor or just load a static picture. If we go to sensor you have different selections. You could also configure different fans so if you have like three fans in a row you can have one display the CPU temp, second one GPU temp and third one like GPU load so that is pretty cool. Well, if it works, it looks brilliant and I can only advise you to also check out different YouTuber builds because when this fan was announced there were also multiple people building systems with this fan and I think once you have multiple of these in a row it just looks absolutely brilliant. Five minutes later and Alconnect 3 decided to kick out the LCD control again. Not sure what the reason for this is, maybe it's IQ related because I'm also running this to control the pump at the same time. Well, if that's the case, then it would be up to Lee and Lee to make sure that there is no conflict with the other software, because at least from what I can tell, the IQ software is still running without any issues. Yeah, just happening right now. After a reboot, and I'm not even running the Alconnect software, and also not running the IQ software. I'm not sure if this is maybe related to the controller, but you can see it's doing funny things. Hmm. I think it could be related to the controller. I'm not sure, but even like after a reboot and without having IQ enabled and without L Connect 3 running, it's always doing this connect and disconnect sound. So yeah, maybe just something wrong with the controller. But the performance of this fan is very good with 18.9 Kelvin difference. Few days later, because I wanted to double check with Lian Li what is going on, why are the fans not working? And as you can see, now it's working. And it's indeed a problem with the controller I have. At least the early controllers have an issue with running high current on the channel number one. So if I plug this on channel number two, three or four, as you can see, it works totally fine. But on channel number one, it seems to be some kind of OCP that is kicking in. I hope this will be fixed on the retail version, but if you ever come across this issue, just plug the fans in port two, three or four. Now I connected three fans in a row as you could see and for example I displayed the fan speed on the left, GPU temperature in the center and CPU temperature on the right and that's a typical application as what you could have it inside your system and I think that is a brilliant way of displaying those like system values inside your system. It's absolutely beautiful. And obviously you can also rotate what's displayed, so it doesn't matter if you want to align it horizontally or vertically, you can set anything you want. The Lian Li Unifan TL LCD 140 is performing very well in my test. As you could see, it is basically leading the chart considering that we were running 1000 RPM and roughly the same noise level as the others. Only the noise blocker fan was reduced in the RPM slightly, just below 800 RPM, to match the noise level of the others just roughly so you can get a better idea of like comparing these. That's why I did it, even though it's like not perfectly scientific, not like perfectly on the same noise level, but you should get a rough idea of how they perform. One thing you should definitely also keep in mind, because if you just look at the chart, it looks like that the Corsair QX140 performs terrible, especially considering how expensive it is. But one thing we didn't take into account in today's video, for example, if we look at the Fantex D30, and I think the name D30 comes from the height of the fan because it's a 30 millimeter high fan, Whereas if you look at the QX140, it's a 25 millimeter high fan. And the height of the fan definitely has an impact on its performance because if you have a higher rotor, then you can push more air through. You can establish a higher static pressure depending on the geometry of the fan. So that's something we didn't take into account. Those fans are all between 25 and 30 millimeters. So Corsair's fan is the smallest out of these, also the worst performing. Then you have, for example, the Fantex D30 performing very well, and also the Li and D fans, they are 28 millimeters, so they're also on the high side. Then the noise blocker fan is 29 millimeter, and the Arctic fan is 27.5. So that's something you have to keep in mind whenever you choose your fan. Obviously, check first what you're generally looking for for the application, if it's a case fan, radiator fan, whatever. If you're looking for special integrations like 
the nice LCD you have on those Lian Li fans, or if you're looking for the IQ integration with Corsair, then this might make more sense for you, and if you have sufficient clearance. That is probably the advantage of this fan, that it has only 25 millimeter in height, so it might be easier for you to fit it. That's something you have to keep in mind. For example, with the Fantex D30, might be limited more in some certain cases, some conditions, that you have to pay attention to the height of the fan. And that's also something that yeah, definitely impacts the performance. That's why you see some kind of variance in the chart. But if you would take the height of the fans into account, they all perform kind of equally whenever you go down to the noise level. I think there is not a big difference between all of those fans we tested today. Whenever you go to the same like 36 to 37 decibels, they all kind of perform the, the same. Only the Lian Li was slightly better it's also probably quite a bit more expensive, but it also comes with the nice infinity mirror and the LCD screen, which is definitely a cool feature to have, but expensive, but could be something for you. That's in the end up to you to decide what you're looking for. I hope you enjoyed this video. Thanks for tuning in. See you next time. Bye-bye.